It is about noon on Tuesday, July 2nd, 2024. It's 90 something degrees. Uh, humidity's up there 45, 50%. But we do have a gentle breeze blowing from the south. And uh, I'll just give you a quick sheep update on the ram there. So he, that ram there, I tried to tempt him to cross the wire last night so that perhaps he would go find the sheep. Um, I came to the field about an hour and a half ago. Sorry for the wind noise. And I tried to convince him to um, let me touch him so that I could grab him and put a halter on him, but he didn't want any part of that. I do have a ram on the sheep right now, so I'm not too concerned. He's just going to miss out on all the fun. Uh, maybe eventually he'll go down there and say hello to the rest of the sheep. But he's a little stinker. So, um, I got to figure a better way to put the rams on. And I think getting them into the pen to sort them is probably not the easiest or best way. Um, I was thinking of bringing all the sheep down and then having them mix with the cows or something like that. But anyway, I'll, I'll think of something that works and try something else out next time. Um, so I was watching the cows here. I'm standing where the wire was, by the way. The left is where they were and the right is where they're going. Um, I was uh, watching the, sh the cows. I wanted to move them at noon. So I was watching the cows, you know, for 30 minutes uh, in the shade of my side-by-side. -side. It was kind of cool and comfortable with the wind blowing. I've noticed a lot of um, behaviors that um, I'm not too happy about. Uh, the first behavior was that the cows were grazing in the middle of the pasture. I want them to come to the end and graze. I don't want them to graze in the middle. So they're doing a bunch of back grazing. Um, I don't want to have to set up back fencing. I can do it. I've done it. Um, I probably will have to do it again. Um, so that involves basically using an extra wire to close off the areas that they've already been at and just extending that wire out every time you move the cows. So it's, it's a little bit more walking, that's all. It's kind of annoying, but that's it. Um, the other behavior I noticed is that they really weren't eating. Um, they are just kind of watching me chewing their cud. You know, some of the calves were nursing on their moms, but mostly they were just waiting. I think they were waiting for me to move them because they knew that there was better forage ahead and they knew that they would be able to fill up their gut if they just waited a little bit. So you know, cows are not completely unintelligent. They're not very smart, but they're not um, really stupid either. And so I've been training them apparently to get ready to eat when I come out here and wait until I open it up before you guys start eating which, you know, I don't think is bad, that bad of a deal. So probably I'll have to do back fencing at the very least to control the manure, but I don't want them grazing heavily in the western part of my pasture. That said, um, for the most part, I've been grazing this way since I've gotten the land. Um, I did do, last year I cut the field up into six sections and kind of did a circle rotation around the middle point of the field. And then I would graze like away from uh, the midline. But I didn't really like that. I just thought it wasn't good to kill a part of the pasture. So I'm going to keep doing it this way. Probably I'll start doing back fencing on the next row. And uh, seeing if it makes a difference with how they graze. But you know, I really don't like seeing two bites. But I will say that when I did watch them eat, they weren't biting uh, grass that had already been eaten. They were biting grass that hadn't been eaten. So if I stop the back raising, I might be able to go with a shallower row. So maybe that's what I'll do is I'll go 100 feet and then I'll set up back fencing so that they don't uh, um, overgraze in certain parts of the pasture. So that's where I'm at with that. One more thing, um, this is kind of the thing that I wanted, I've been wanting to talk about this for a couple days, is that naughty D word, uh, drought. Um, Remembering that all droughts are local, uh, droughts are subjective, depends on where you are and the techniques of farming you're using. Um, but the general definition, like in general, drought just means you're not getting as much rain as you typically get. So we are in the first week of July. Last June, we had tons of rain in the beginning week. Um, we just had a really wet 
late spring. And then it pretty much stopped raining altogether. We got a couple drops here and there. And then we did get, I think last Wednesday, we got uh, three quarters of an inch. That's when everybody started complaining that I was abusing my dogs because they happened to get a little dirty. Um, so, um, with that in mind, do I feel like we're in a drought? Um, no, not right now. Um, I do feel uh, that unless we start getting rain more consistently, um, we will develop into a drought, right? And what I mean by that is like, let's say tomorrow it rains um, an inch and then it doesn't rain for three day, three weeks and then it rains like half an inch and then it doesn't rain for three weeks. To me, that would be a drought for this area, right? Um, based on the weather forecast I've seen, that's the conditions we're gonna see is we're gonna get rain every couple of weeks a little bit, probably not very much. And uh, we're not gonna see a significant rainfall uh, probably for a couple months, right? So August looks like it's going to be pretty dry as well, okay? So we are not in a drought right now, but drought conditions are likely to develop. That's the email I got yesterday from the drought, whatever thing, from the USDA, blah, 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 okay? Now let's talk about the drought conditions. They have a rating scale. It goes from D0 to D5. D5 is everything's dead. Nothing can survive. There's no vegetation. It's a complete desert. Okay, so D5 is probably what, if you read in the Bible in ancient times, that's what they would call a drought. There's no food, nothing's growing, everything's dead, okay? D0 is what we call unusually dry. And what D0 means is we're still getting rain, but a little less rain than we expect, or a little less regular than we'd like, okay? That's D0 drought, okay? D1 is basically we're not getting rain we're like significantly dry okay where you can notice it and then d2 i think is where you start to see effects uh, d2 is when things stop growing and they recommend in a d2 you start selling your animals as quickly as you can and then from there it just gets worse okay uh so d3 d4 i think d4 they say just get rid of all your animals right um there's no point in grazing and let's, let's move them out of the drought-stricken areas to the areas where they have rain and, and forage, okay? So anyway, um, that's kind of the story there on the drought levels, okay? All droughts are local. Um, there is a possibility that the area that I'm at will get perfectly normal rainfall, but for whatever reason, the rain will miss my farm. And we experienced that last year, and I think the year before last, where we had significant rain, it just missed our farm. Um, it kind of missed our area, right? So that's the other thing is you need to get a rain gauge, you need to measure your rainfall, and you need to determine for yourself whether you are in a drought, okay? Now the last little bit, okay, so those are kind of like droughts are local, they're subjective, um, there's different kinds of droughts, um, but uh, the last little thing is uh, what your plan is for drought management, okay? If you're farming, and you rely on rainfall and sunlight. Um, sunlight's pretty much a guarantee. You're gonna get that no matter what, uh, barring the destruction of the sun, which isn't gonna happen in our lifetimes, hopefully. Uh, rainfall is the variable, okay? And the drought management begins with the realization that each inch of rainfall corresponds to, you're roughly an inch of grass growth, right? So if you wanna grow a foot of grass, you need a foot of rain. Okay, more or less, right? It might be, you know, a factor of two or a factor of 0.5 or whatever. Rain equals forage. Okay, if you don't have rain, you can't get forage. If you have a little bit of rain, you get a little bit of forage and so on, right? Okay, so that's the beginning of the drop management is measuring your rain. Okay, number two is measuring your forage. You look out in the future of where you're going and you ask the ever so important question, is it enough? right? And if the answer to that question is no, it's not enough, then you must get rid of animals. There's nothing else you can do, right? If you decide to feed your animals, especially cows, I don't know about sheep, but I assume they're the same way. The cows will eat the grass first and then the feed. They will kill your grass first 
and then the feed. You cannot put your cows on pasture that has already been grazed, that hasn't grown back, and that isn't ready to be grazed, and expect good things to happen, right? And so you need to have a plan. Like, what point do I figure out I don't have enough forage? And at what point do I sell the cows? How far ahead in the future do I need to look? In my case, about three months, okay? I should know for the next three months what my cows are gonna eat. Okay, if I don't get another drop of rainfall, I should know whether I'm gonna have enough food, right? And so for this particular rotation style, I'm at a certain point in the field, I can calculate how many feet are left in the field, how many feet I'm gonna use each week, and so how many weeks are left. And the cows will reach the end of the field in September. Okay, so today is July 1st, 2nd, whatever. I'm up to September. So then I have to look in September and ask what's gonna happen in September. Is the grass gonna regrow in time? And when I look back in the past, I'm looking at the grass every time I walk by it and sure enough, it's regrowing. I am very confident that I can last till October and not run out of forage for any of my animals, right? Okay. If my three month forecast changes, okay. Now October is when I can start rolling out hay. Okay, and if I don't have forage, I'll just keep them confined to a small area and they'll overgraze that one area and leave the rest alone. Okay, and I'm hopefully gonna get enough hay. I haven't gotten the hay yet, but the guy said he's gonna get it to me. If I get enough hay, then I can say, well, I'm gonna last until spring pretty easy. I'm just the hay, uh, the water that I have coming out of the tap and then uh, protein supplement, right? So I'm good. I'm good for the rest of the year, as long as I get that hay. If I don't get the hay, if for some reason the guy calls me up and says no hay, right? Um, and I'm like, well, hay's too expensive. I can't buy any. I'm just, I'm just gonna, you know, plan B it. What's plan B is I'll go buy some feed from the feed lot, not the feed lot, um, the feed store. They have like, a, I pull up with the truck and they fill it up, right? And I supplement what's on the pasture uh, with that. And then I give them the protein supplement, which it should have it in there. You know, that's not too expensive, but it is expensive enough that I'd rather buy expensive hay than do that, right? But more importantly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell animals. Which animals am I going to sell? This is part of my drop management plan. Number one, all the calves, right? If tomorrow I wake up in the morning, I come to the field and I realize I don't have enough forage, I load up the calves and I sell them. All of them. Okay? Number two, I'm going to sell half the cows, right? I take half the cows, the ones I don't want, I load them up and I sell them. That'll put me down to about 10 cows, I think. So I'll just have 10 cows, uh, which will dramatically decrease their feed requirement, how much nutrients they need to sustain themselves, which should allow me to rotate much more slowly and preserve the stockpile for much, more long, much longer. Another aspect of drop management, how do we maximize every drop of rain that falls on the land? The answer is ground cover, ground cover, ground cover. If something's growing in your ground, it's putting down roots. It's building up that mycorrhizal structure, um, the mycorrhizal fungi structure. It's going to allow that water that when it lands on the ground, it's going to be soaked into the ground and drawn downstairs. Also, I'm not overgrazing. I'm not doing the total grazing technique because I want those deep roots, right? I just want to lightly graze the, the grass, leave lots of grass behind so that the roots don't die. If those roots are deep enough, I know there's moisture down there. I know in the depths of the third year of drought that we've had here, uh, 2021, 2022, 2023, if I would dig down just a couple of feet, the ground would be cool and it would be moist. Okay, so there is water down there. It's just a matter of allowing the plants to get the roots down there. Okay, so that's another part of my drop management plan. Never ever overgraze, leave plenty of ground cover, and let the grass put down deep roots. And if that happens, then there's a good possibility that cutting the animals will be more than enough to sustain my operation through a drought. So, uh, my prognostication prediction is that this drought is not going to be in any way severe. Um, it's barely going to be noticeable. Um, if it does come, I don't think it's going to materialize. I think we're going to get some rain in August and September, and we're just going to have a fantastic year. Temperatures will be slightly moderate. They won't be super high. Um, the forage will be great, especially on my farm. Uh, the cows will be in awesome condition. 
and everything's gonna go well. And the minute I think that something's not gonna go well, that's when I start making changes to my plants. Guys, have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.